Hey guys, Black Cross here, and welcome to another segment of the PlayStation 2 Legacy. Or, to be more precise, a bonus content of the PlayStation 2 Legacy. Now, bonus content is basically, as stated, is bonus content. It's extra stuff that goes around with the PlayStation 2 system, uh, either fun facts or little different products and stuff like that, or fun little facts you probably didn't know about the system, so on and so forth. Today, I wanted to actually make this video. Um, this is actually being recorded on the day of, but uh, I did have another f main episode plan, but then I decided to change that and just make this video happen because as of a couple days ago when this video gets released, on March the 4th is the 20th anniversary for the PS2. The system turns 20. Now here's the saying, this is going based on the Japanese original release system. Uh, in America, we got it on October 28th, and in other countries, it was another date entirely. Uh, but in Japan, it was released on March 4th, so as of right now, it is officially 20 years old. Kind of hard to believe the system's that old now, but it, it's true, it is officially 20 years of age. And, Boy, you, um, for those of you who are of my age, which is 30 and up, you feel it. You feel the age of the PS2. And I wanted to dedicate a video for the PS2 because of how much, how much it resonates with me as a gamer. Not just someone who played the system, but has resonated with me as I have grown in age. And it's definitely something that I wanted to talk about for a while. And I figure, why not go ahead and talk about it in this video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video game story of me and the PlayStation 2. So the first part of the story basically goes back, obviously, when the PlayStation 2 first came out. Now, of course, we didn't get the PlayStation 2 right off the back, which technically would have been October 28th for us. But we didn't get it on year one, obviously. Um... Me and Del Mar, our very first console we've ever gotten was, of course, the N64, and we had always played games on the N64. And uh, even though we didn't play every game, we were content with whatever game we had at that time period. Um, but when the PlayStation 2 came out, uh, in one of our uh, VHSs that we would watch, I think if memory serves me, and again, Del Mar had mentioned in the past, but uh, there was a trailer on one of the VHSs where it showcased Kingdom Hearts and it looked it amazing of course and my brother ended up getting both Kingdom Hearts and a PS2 on his birthday and technically Kingdom Hearts came out on the 28th of 2002. Uh, my brother played uh, Kingdom Hearts you know he would play it uh, more or less tried to. Uh, there were points in the game where he had trouble, and that was, of course, the bosses. Anytime he would play a video game and he was always afraid of fighting the boss, he'd come get me. He'd be like, Big bro, do you care to help me beat this boss? I'm like, sure, no problem. And I would beat the boss. But with Kingdom Hearts at the time, it resonated with me in a way differently. I was familiar with how games would play on the N64. I never knew there would be other games that could play differently and a lot better looking, might I add. And keep in mind, this was back in 2002. So even though graphically it looks different now, back then it was still quite a jump, you know. Think about it. You compare the graphics of like Super Mario 64 to PS2 Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that was a pretty big jump in terms of quality that it looked. And at the time, to me, it looked it absolutely jaw-dropping amazing. But, uh, I ended up wanting to play Kingdom Hearts for myself, so me and Del Mar actually took turns to play Kingdom Hearts. Now, fun story, this was actually before we discovered the invention of the memory card. Now, keep in mind, again, we played mostly the N64, so we thought the game saved on the disc. Whereas, in the 64, it's saved on the car uh, cartridge. Not exactly the case. It wasn't until a, a few friends of ours told us we had to have a memory card. And I was like, why do we need a memory card? And, of course, this transition began. And so, we finally got ourselves a memory card and we were able to advance. 
into the story of Kingdom Hearts. The farthest we ever got in Kingdom Hearts was in the Tarzan's world, Deep Jungle. That was the farthest that we ever got into without actually needing a save data. So, if you calculate time-wise, we probably spent a close to, like, maybe three, four hours of gameplay trying to get through Kingdom Hearts and stuff like that without a save file. But, <laughs> Another thing that uh, I learned was that you could actually override your save data. And at first, you know, being dumb version me back then, I was afraid to do that because that might mess up something or whatever. So I saved, I kid you not whenever I say this, I saved on every slot. So imagine younger me playing Kingdom Hearts, and keep in mind if you played Kingdom Hearts back in the day, it had 99 save slots. So, think about it. I had gotten all the way up to Hall of Action at one point, and my friends saw that I had like almost 90 slots of save data. And they were like, why do you need 90 save slots? And they're like, and I was like, because I didn't want to override the data. And they're like, you're supposed to. And I'm like, what? So, I was very least informed with technology back then where I am now but yeah that was my spirit my first experience with the PlayStation 2 I learned a little bit better since then but I was I was I, I didn't know anything of course back then you know this was a completely different thing for me the PlayStation 2 Kingdom Hearts resonated really big with me back then but more so as the years went on a uh, couple years later me and my best friend, TJ, uh, we have been friends for years, you know. We don't see each other nowadays because life tends to separate us. We can't get a day off on the same time and stuff like that, and so things happen. But, uh, me and TJ, the biggest thing that we share is that we love the PlayStation 2. Some of our favorite games, some of our favorite titles originated from the PlayStation 2. And... You know, during our friendship, my best friend TJ introduced me to a bunch of PlayStation 2 games. A uh, perfect example is Devil May Cry 3 and Resident Evil 4. Being at the age that I was, which was like between 13 and 15, my mother was very protective. She didn't want me to be, to, as the phrase would go, explore my horizon and experience the risk and whatever it comes out of. She was very protective. So I never got to experience rated mature games. Or or in this case, a rated T games, per chance. So naturally, not being able to play these other titles, I never got a chance to experience them, of course. My buddy TJ, however, he allowed me to experience them. Because uh, his parents wasn't as protective on him as my mother is to me and Delmar, but my buddy TJ, he uh, introduced me to Devil May Cry 3 and Resident Evil 4, and for my birthday, he got me Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition, and then he got me Resident Evil 4, and I love both games. Those games have become my, some of my cherished memories that I have attained it. Now, of course, uh, there was one other game that he introduced to me, but we'll get to that in just a sec after I talk about one other major story that me and him has. And this is the biggest memory that I have when it comes to the PlayStation 2, and that is the fact that it involves Final Fantasy X. Now, Kingdom Hearts is my personal favorite uh, video game of all time. My best friend TJ, however, his favorite game of all time is actually Final Fantasy X. And it's interesting because this is actually the very first Final Fantasy game that him and I ever got to play and we never got to experience another PlayStation, uh, another Final Fantasy game beforehand and we both played Final Fantasy X. Now of course we got the game back in Knoxville years ago and he got his copy, I got my copy at the same time he got to play his copy and we were so glued to this game for one whole night Okay, now I want you to think about it. Those of you who have played Final Fantasy X probably know the amount of time that it would take, especially just casually, okay? So we went from the very beginning of the game and made our way all the way to the temple where you got Shiva and fought against Seymour. 
So you think about that, making it from the very beginning of the game to what is essentially might be the halfway point of the game probably. That is like extensively amount of long hours to play an RPG for that matter. And we were glued to that the entire time. It was the most entertaining that we've ever had and probably one of the fondest memories that I've ever had just with the PlayStation 2, much less with hanging out with TJ and stuff. There was one other game that he introduced to me, and that was Dragon Quest VIII. He originally got Dragon Quest VIII because it came with a demo, at the time when it first came out, it came with a demo of Final Fantasy XII demo disc. So, he got it to where he can try out Final Fantasy XII demo, but then of course he played Dragon Quest VIII and it was really good to him. And I saw him play it and I felt intrigued of wanting to play Dragon Quest VIII. Obviously, my main reason was, of course, to try out Final Fantasy XII, but I also wanted to try out Dragon Quest VIII as well. And, again, thanks to TJ, I ended up getting my own copy. Not from him, but my mother actually got it for me for a birthday gift for me. But, uh, I played through Dragon Quest VIII, and I absolutely loved that game, too. So, really, it's thanks to TJ that I got to experience a lot of different video games that I normally wouldn't get a chance to experience, without his help, you know. I'm sure I probably would have eventually dived in deeper and would have played more, but TJ was the one that more or less sparked that fire when it comes to playing more games on the PlayStation 2, of course. Fast forward to years later, and the PlayStation 3 comes out, and I did something very stupid whenever I was that age, during the PlayStation 3 age. And I would trade in some of my games to get new games that was coming out for the PlayStation 3. And of course, during that time period, the PlayStation 3 had the transitional phase of where it would occasionally release HD collections of previous games, such as the God of War HD collection, the Jack and Dexter, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, so on and so forth. And I was stupid enough to trade in most of my original PlayStation 2 games. Uh, I remember whenever I was a kid, I had a full set of the Dot .hack series for the PlayStation 2. The first four parts, and then the three parts of GU. I had those, and I recklessly traded those in in order to get new games that was coming out for the system. So, for the most part, most of the games that I had, I don't have the original versions of. For example, I don't have the original uh, Devil May Cry trilogy that I had gotten. I don't have the original uh, Resident Evil that I got from TJ. I don't even have the original Dragon Quest VIII game that I first had, where it had the demo disc of Final Fantasy XII. So, a lot of that stuff I did trade in. I didn't trade in my Kingdom Hearts 2 copy that I had gotten years ago, because I love Kingdom Hearts, and who's to say when, I, when Kingdom Hearts HD was ever going to come out for the PlayStation 3 at the time. It was like one of the last HD collections that finally got released for the PlayStation 3, and then a couple of years later it got released for the PlayStation 4, so, um, yeah. I was stupidly trading in stuff, and I regret that, really. Thankfully, I was able to get the majority of them back, uh, in terms of collecting and stuff like that. But, um, most importantly, though, I felt this weird transition during this time period. I played a lot of PlayStation 3 games during that time period, and I felt like we was entering in a realm of where Gaiman was finally going to go downhill from here. Uh, this was my thinking, of course. And the PlayStation 3, while I did have a lot of PlayStation 3 games that I did enjoy, there were a lot of other PlayStation 3 games that just didn't resonate well with me. I felt like the quality of gaming had diminished, you know. To trade in a better looking game you had to sacrifice how the gameplay for most games was going to be. We had this trend of button mashing, we had the trend of like multiple shooter games, multiple zombie apocalypse games. We had this trend of just repeating over and over of the same type of game and I was getting burned out so badly that I said to myself, I don't care about what the next generation is going to hold, I'm going to go backwards and look into the PlayStation 2, because I'm sure there's a lot of games that I never got to experience. And... a lot indeed. There was... Compared to the 10 games that I probably had for the PlayStation 2 that I had played, maybe 20, depending, there was 
over a thousand games that I never knew even existed. So I was like, what in the world have I missed? And one of the first games that kind of sparked this fire, uh, spire, fire, was that of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Technically, this is the third entry of the Shin Megami Tensei series. And I got it because it featured Dante from Devil May Cry. So I was like, okay, let's see what this is like. And it was an absolute joy to play. I absolutely loved the turn base. I loved the risk and reward that it had in the game. The fact that you can uh, bribe uh, to get other demons to join your party and stuff. The fact that depending on critical damage or bonuses that you're able to achieve, you actually get an extra turn that you can use and stuff. It really made for a really great strategy RPG game. And then a few months later, after I discovered Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and said to myself, that's it, I'm sick into retro games, I find out that Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy XV was going to be put onto the next console generation. And I was like, damn it! <laughs> but then again, I probably wouldn't have gotten a chance to play through great game titles like uh, Bloodborne or The Witcher 3, stuff like that. So I'm glad that the PlayStation 4 has definitely improved since the PlayStation 3. But I'm not going to deny that I still have that same feeling for the PlayStation 3 in terms of quality of gaming. But I still go back to play through the PlayStation 2 to experience some of the games that I never got to play through and get some more favorite game titles that I never got a chance to play before. For example, the most recent PlayStation 2 game that had become one of my personal favorites now is Blood Would Tell. And the way I found out of Blood Would Tell was whenever I first subscribed it to Metal Jesus. He had, at the time, a lot of different uh, Hidden Gems videos for the PlayStation 2. And one of these games he mentioned was that of Blood Would Tell. And I looked at it and I was like, this sounds pretty interesting. And I looked at the price and I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? So I thought to myself, I was like, well, I, I, I'll get it and see what it's like, you know? Because if it is as good as Metal Jesus says, then I definitely got to give it a chance, you know? Is it worth the price? Probably not to a lot of people is not worth the price, but I did pay for it and I'm glad I did because it became one of my personal favorite games out of the PlayStation 2, alongside with Kingdom Hearts, uh, Shadow of the Colossus, Jack and Dexter, God of War, so on and so forth. So needless to say, I have a lot of memories with the PlayStation 2 and still to this day, I'm still finding great games for the PlayStation 2. I think one of the biggest things that when it comes to the PlayStation 2 legacy that I am doing isn't just to create videos for the channel, obviously. I am doing this because there are still hundreds of PlayStation 2 games that I never got to experience and I'm finally now for the first time ever experiencing most of these PlayStation 2 games for the very first time. And I am so glad that I am finally able to experience them to enjoy them, and to share them with you guys, you know? That's what the purpose of the PlayStation 2 Legacy is. For other PS2 collectors who are showing up into the sidelines, they may be interested in a particular title, or they may be interested into a lot of PlayStation 2 games that maybe they didn't think to look, and if they see a game that they were wanting to look into, they can click on that video and see what comes out of that game, and what to expect from it, and what type of joy they might have with it, you know? Admittedly, like I said, in terms of US releases, there are over 1,700 PlayStation 2 titles. Am I gonna get the whole 17, 1,700, about to say 17,000, 1,700 games that is available? Probably not, but that's not a right now thing. I say probably in the next few years, I might actually say to myself, I want the whole collection of PS2 games. So who's to say, you know? You never know what the future holds for me. But currently right now, my main goal, and this is stupid, but I want to. I want to get at least 500 PlayStation 2 games. At least for the time being. Because even though, yes, there are a lot of other ones, I'm not a big fan of sports games, nor am I the best or the biggest fan of racing games. So there's a lot of sports games and there's a lot of racing games, so while I'm not a fan of either one of them, I might give me a couple of racing games just to enjoy them and stuff. So with that being said guys, thank you so much for watching this little mini story that I have 
in regards to the PlayStation 2. And I hope you enjoyed this, because 20 years, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since the PlayStation 2 first launched, and you know what? I'm glad that there's a lot more people coming into the light of the PlayStation 2, because it is an incredible system in my personal opinion. And hopefully, I am hoping that when we finally do get the PlayStation 5, that it is fully backwards compatible because that would mean that a lot more people can experience these other games on the PlayStation 2 that they never got to experience whenever either they were younger or because of the newer generation they didn't have a chance to experience. So this would be pretty cool if that ends up being the case. But thank you guys so much for watching and I shall see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Catch you later.